The distance to point algorithm simply assigns each grid node a value equal to the distance to the closest control point. GIS oriented applications include distance to market, distance to railhead, and distance to pipe junction mapping. But the real power of distance to point gridding involves qualified resource and contamination estimations. To illustrate, let's start with this contamination isopack. According to the Rockworks 17 Utilities Statistics Report, the volume of contaminated soil is 722,579 cubic meters. To add more credibility to this estimate, the volumetrics should be qualified based on the distance from the estimated cells to the control points. We start by filtering the distance to point grid into three Boolean models based on distances that are determined by the spatial variability of the data. For example, the measured classification will be considered as cells within 10 meters of a control point. The indicated classification will be considered as cells between 10 and 20 meters of a control point, and the inferred classification will be considered as cells between 20 and 40 meters of a control point. All other cells will be discarded. These Boolean grids are made up of ones and zeros. By multiplying the original isopack by the Boolean grids, we can qualify the volumetrics into measured, indicated, and inferred categories. Advantages? Distance to point gridding can be useful for GIS modeling, such as performing distance to market analyses. Distance to point gridding, more importantly, can be used in conjunction with Boolean math operations to compute qualified resource or contaminant estimates based on cutoff distances between the original control points and the interpolated cell nodes. Disadvantages? Distance to point gridding does not illustrate the data itself, just the proximity of grid model nodes relative to the original data and distance to point gridding is not intended for modeling structural surfaces or isopacks.